Hey guys and welcome back to another video and also welcome to a bit of a crazy day today in Formula 1. As for those who don't already know, it's been finally, finally confirmed that none other than Sergio Perez will partner Max Verstappen at Red Bull next year, leaving Albon without a seat in F1. So wow, okay, I mean, could anybody have expected three different drivers to be Verstappen's teammate in three different years, after Ricardo jumped ship to Renault of course? It's just crazy, I mean, Perez at Red Bull, who could have expected that? I mean, this year has already been crazy for a magnitude of reasons that I don't really need to get into, but if you're anything like me, you're probably incredibly fascinated to see just how this plays out in 2021. I mean, Perez, as we all know, he has heaps of talent, 10 podiums to his name, and of course that one win in Sakir a couple weeks ago now. So yeah, given the right machinery, he could be capable of much, much more. And it'll be interesting to see how he fares against Verstappen. I mean, of course, Verstappen, incredibly talented. Perez, also incredibly talented. So I think it'll be a lot more even than, say, Gasly and Verstappen, and now Albon and Verstappen. I think the level of talent between the two is a lot more, a lot closer together. And this brings up the question as to whether, if he's still really far off, like how Gasly was, like how Albon has been over this last year, what is wrong with that second Red Bull seat then? I mean, if even Perez is still, still far off from Verstappen, I don't, Red Bull are going to have to do some work behind the scenes to try and fix that second Red Bull seat, because it is crazy. It seems like a cursed seat, just how... Just how far off that second driver is, how they can never get anywhere close to Verstappen, uh, let alone in kind of overtaking distance of it. I mean, it's not as bad as, like, say, Mercedes. Bottas may not be as high up as Hamilton, but even still, you do see Bottas sometimes getting close to Hamilton. Whereas that second driver at Red Bull just never can get anywhere close to Verstappen. So, Finally, I hope that Perez is finally the answer to the question as to whether or not this second seat is, well, cursed, quote-unquote. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see 2021, the battle between the two. I think it probably will be pretty fierce. I think that Perez will definitely be challenging for podiums and maybe even wins. I would like to see Perez as another race winner. Uh, of course, he won in Sakir uh, earlier this year, but... Next year, I want to see if he can win multiple times. I think he probably will be quite consistent um, in the terms of just being on the podium, being at least up there, being in the top six. But Sergio Perez has been in F1 since, what, 2011? So, needless to say, he's one of, the, uh, one of the veterans of the group when you think about it. I mean, it's just him, then, I guess, Hamilton, Vettel and Vaikonen and Alonso next year, who've been in F1 longer than he has. So yeah, it's quite weird to think that he's been in F1 for so long. And yeah, of course, that is when in Sakir a couple weeks ago was the biggest gap, I think, ever between the start of a career and their, a driver's first win. So yeah, needless to say, it's quite a coming of age for him to finally be in a top team. Of course, he was in McLaren in 2013, but that didn't really work out. He got a handful of podiums, a couple second places as well but never could really get to that top step. So yeah, I really hope 2021 is the answer to all his problems. I would love to see him on the top step just a couple times more. And who knows how long he'll be. I wonder if this will just be a short-term replacement or he'll be in it long-term and be in Red Bull for quite a couple years to come. But needless to say, this is quite some exciting news. I mean, wow, what a... I, I just said it before, but what a crazy, crazy turn of events this whole year has been. And... Who could have predicted, who could have predicted Sergio Perez to Red Bull in 2021 when just but a day ago we thought he wouldn't have a seat at all as, I mean, most people thought it would be Albon and kind of rightfully so to be fair, or maybe not rightfully so, but we just expected that. We didn't think Helmut Marco would point the gun at another driver, but I guess that's just what happened. I mean... I got fooled, uh, I'm going to admit, by a, a troll tweet account uh, as Red Bull Racing and I just took it for granted that it was Albon for 2021, but Perez for 2021, I, I think I'm just rambling on a bit now, <laughs> a bit now, just going on about Perez, but wow, it is exciting, I can't wait to see how he performs uh, in that Red Bull seat next year, but anyway, I want to get onto the other side of the coin to poor Alex Albon, I mean, he's had a couple podiums in uh, Mugello, 
And where else was it? I think it was in Imola as well earlier this year. Oh no, it, sorry, it was in uh, Bahrain when Perez actually had his engine retirement and when he was uh, on form for a podium. So that was, that's quite a how the turntables <laughs> moment right there. But yeah, there we go. So uh, Albon without a seat in 2021. That's quite interesting. And of course, he can't go to AlphaTauri with Yuki Tsunoda from Formula 2 coming into AlphaTauri for 2021 partnering Pierre Gasly, the first driver born in the 2000s to race in Formula 1, which is also quite interesting, at age 20 I think he is, but yeah, poor Albon, man, I mean, I don't know what he's going to do in 2021, maybe he'll do some other motorsport, but, well actually, as I'm saying that, I'm kind of doubting that, I don't know, I think he might just like do an orc on how he did it in 2018, just, I mean 2019, sorry, just take it to the side for a sec, um, and of course he'll still be a test driver for Red Bull throughout next year, or I hope so actually, he probably will be. So yeah, it's quite interesting to see Albon only, what, this is his third year in F1 now, and he's already off the table, he's already gone, I can't believe that really, I mean, he's only been in F1, what, 2019, and of course midway through 2019 he went to Red Bull, then all of Red Bull this year, and then already off the grid for 2021, so that also brings up the question where is he going to go afterwards, uh, in 2022 that is, there's a magnitude of options, I mean, maybe if Vettel drops out as he probably will at the end of next year, he'll maybe go to Aston Martin, or he could go to Haas maybe, I don't know, it could be anywhere, but I really doubt he'll go back to Red Bull Racing once again. He might go to Alpha Tauri, but to Red Bull Racing once again in 2022? I don't know, I doubt that. I think with Red Bull, it's kind of whole driver ethos is that once you've had your like once you've had your time in the sport, that is it. That I mean, not in the sport, but in Red Bull Racing, in the team, that is it. You're never coming back. I mean, well I say that, but Kvyat came back to Alpha Tauri, but Never to Red Bull actually, so I guess it still does stand, I mean, I doubt Albon will go back to Red Bull, maybe to Alpha Tauri, probably to a midfield team, but yeah, that'll be interesting to see in 2021, I hope he just doesn't go, uh, like, completely and never comes back, I mean, that's a bit of an extreme uh, opinion, but yeah, it's quite, quite weird to see him already off the grid, but... Wow, what a crazy grid we have in 2021. Schumacher for Haas, Sonoda for Alpha Tauri, and of course Mazepin, but uh, we don't talk about him around here. And Hamilton still not signed for Mercedes. I mean, getting into a bit of a tangent here, but, well, of course, he will. I mean, he will sign for Mercedes. It's 100% he'll sign for Mercedes. I don't know what all this suspense is about, but it could be somewhere else. Oh, Russell might sign for Mercedes next year. He won't. I mean, Hamilton's just taking his sweet old time to uh, make that contract. Well, watch this get clipped when he doesn't. I mean, he actually is off the grid next year. This will uh, become a bit of a meme, but regardless, it is a pretty crazy grid for next year. Who could have expected? I keep saying it, but who could have expected all this? What a crazy year we have next year. And yeah, I think I'm about, I don't know, about 90% sure Hamilton will stay at Mercedes, because he might want to go out on a blaze of glory like how Rosberg did. He doesn't want to, like, do an Alonso and be in 67th place at the end of the year, uh, driving for some midfield team. But, yeah, it's quite interesting, quite interesting to see. And another quite interesting fact is that it's the first non-Red Bull Junior team member signed by either Red Bull or Alpha Tauri since Sebastian Bourdais back for Toro Rosso in 2008. So, yeah, 12 years or 13 years next uh, next year. So, I mean, Red Bull do like to play their cards close to their chest. They don't ever really take another pick from a random, a ra just a random driver who isn't part of their Red Bull Junior team, so yeah, it's quite interesting to see Perez in Red Bull next year, so I think that's about it for this video, actually, I've rambled on quite a lot, it hasn't been the most structured uh, video to say the least, but I hope it's been entertaining nonetheless, uh, I do want to do a little bit of a shout out to my second channel, Sifteron2, been uploading about twice a week on there, one video on my Terraria Summoner run, and one video doing a weekly review of the Attack on Titan episode for that week. Uh, if you know anything about any of that, which you might not if you're on this channel, go uh, go have that a little look. But anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to subscribe, comment, share, and I'll be back in the next video. See ya!